Fact find like it's 1999. <laughs> it's a takeoff of a song, isn't it? You know. So anyway, it's, it's a bit of fun. So what we're we talking about here? What's the background? Well, we're talking here about some people now. Some mortgage advisors are really thinking seriously about migrating into the financial advisor world. Might be to complement their mortgage business, to supplement it, maybe to build their career, their future. And um, to become a financial advisor, there's essentially three steps. So I mean, let's just quickly summarize those three steps. The, the first step to becoming a, a, a qualified financial advisor, of course, is to qualify in the various exams. That's a big step for most people. It takes a bit of time. We're starting our route to uh, financial advisor next month in April. We're taking a number of people through a nine-month period of qualification and it's fine it's, it's it, you can do it it costs you a few quid but it can be done now once you become uh, qualified then of course as always you've got to get your CAS your competent advisor status is something that you need to obtain through your principal for a network for a firm whoever they need to make sure you're skilled in the area of giving financial advice that actually is the hardest one because dealing with a mortgage compared to dealing with a client's financial planning is very different process requires different skills different attributes etc and then once you've got the CAS you then have to uh, do your CPD and the SPS which is your statement of professional standing each year you have to prove your ability and continue onwards and then some people go on to do chartered examinations and become a chartered financial advisor. I was watching Martin Lewis show on Thursday and he had a chartered financial advisor there on, on the studio and she looked very important and uh, and well qualified, which she was. Chartered sounds great, isn't it? So that's through. Now the 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 one I'm thinking about today for you is this one here, the CAS. Because a lot of you can get exams and do all that. It's not, not a difficult thing to do. Well it is difficult but uh, it's not unheard of. But the CAS is hard. So one thing you can do now is to start thinking about fact-finding beyond just the mortgage. You should do anyway, but most of us don't. We just do a mortgage fact-find. Now, why should you start thinking about expanding your fact-finding? In other words, fact-find like it's 1999. Well, that's all, there's three reasons, really. Number one, you've probably got a bit of time because you're not probably as busy as you were last year. Uh, number two is it's good face time with clients. To, to fact find, talk about their needs, wants, aspirations, etc., is good business with clients. It builds rapport, builds the respect. And number three, you can make referrals to a financial advisor now. You should be doing it anyway. <laughs> if you recognize the need, you should make the referral. And I'm sure when your compliance person comes to watch you, you probably talk about that a lot, but you don't do it in reality. But you could and you should. Ultimately, of course, you could become a financial advisor yourself. So that's really the stepping stone to it. So how do you do it? Well, you've probably got your formal fact find that you have to complete for your mortgage. I get all of that. That's fine. So really, I'm asking you to think about a, a broader conversation, maybe to spend 15, 20, 25 minutes uh, expanding the conversation a bit, really, beyond just the mortgage finance. Remember, this is good for the client. This is very good professional activity from your part. So how do you do it? Well, when you talk about a mortgage, you talk about income, expenditure, assets, liabilities, a bit on the credit side of things, bish, bash, dip, mortgage, agreed. When you talk about somebody's financial planning, you have to look at a more um, holistic view. And I've got two or three things to help you, just to get you thinking about how you do this. Now, for any of you that have studied psychology at uni or whatever, you might have come across Maslow, Abraham Maslow was a dude from the 50s who created, read a few books about what motivates the human being. And he, he maintained that humans are aspirational. They like to improve their lot in, in the world. And you look at people and they do that. So what he created with this thing called the, the pyramid, Maslow's pyramid. He actually created the pyramid. We, we, we said he did because it looks quite good on a piece of paper. No? But the pyramid had two parts. And people aspire to go up the pyramid. That's all where they climb the pyramid. So it's a metaphor. The basic needs at the bottom are mostly survival and security. Security and survival. So as a person, as a human, our basic need is to survive and then to feel secure. So it's about um, income, property, home, um, money coming in to pay the bills. It's all, it's all about that. Once we get that, we then move into what they call the growth area. 
This is where the human grows as a person. The first part is uh, get out there, meet people, become part of a team, part of a social group, family, friends, all that sort of thing. Then we get into proving ourselves, our self-esteem, to be able to, to you know, to, to 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 achieve things in the world that we we want to set out to achieve, and to be recognised by our peers. Then ultimately, you have this um, self-actualization, they call it, which is about achieving what you want to achieve out of life, really. So we basically grow. Now, in your financial planning. You talk about the client's needs in those areas, in that order. And that's the important thing, because the first um, area of financial planning you want to talk about is protection. And I talk about Pepsi, which I talk about, etc. So protection, first of all, down the bottom there, in the event of death, so surviving, is underpins everything. Now, as a mortgage and, and protection advisor, you probably already talk about this. <laughs> Because you do. So that's certainly the first area to look. And, and, and amongst that as well, you have um, earnings protection. There you go. So you have life assurance and earnings protection. I'll squeeze that in for you. Again, that's life assurance and that's income protection, critical illness, that sort of thing. And that underpins everything. Now, you could also start to talk about uh, the next area of security and stability in retirement years how will people survive and that of course is your pension um, provision if you like it's all well and good having income now because you're young aren't you, you can do it. but when you're old and creaky and, and the kind of things what are you going to do to survive so that's what we call pep because this is pepsi which i call it now once people have talked about that foundation you can then sp sort of talk about aspirational improving your lot um, improving your position in society, um, doing whatever it is you set out to do. And that's when you get into savings. So you could look at how to save money, savings. And then once you've saved the money, you could then look at investment needs, how you can grow your wealth. And then we tend to look at other areas like um, legacy. I call it other. So you might want to look at how, you, how you're going to pass your legacy on to uh, your next of kin, you know, your wills, that sort of thing. Um, property purchase comes down here mostly, but it could go up there as well. And what you've got there is what we call Pepsio. There you go, Pepsio. <laughs> Let's put that in there for you. Pepsio, which is our acronym. And we use that when we teach financial advisors to fact find. The point I'm making here is that you could have a conversation around those things, make a few notes. You could get some kind of fact find together if you wanted to with some hard facts, soft facts. But it's about practicing the art. And that is financial planning. That's what it is. Most financial advisors are wealth managers. They tend to work in that area because that's where it's all lucrative, really. They leave us a lot to do this sort of thing. And a bit of pension provision as well. A lot of legacy planning, IHT planning, that sort of thing. The other thing you could do here is to operate a lifeline. Now, we've done, sneak this over here for you. We've done videos on lifeline before. Lifeline is another way of looking at clients' needs, both in the past, the present, and the future. And you look at a family, hobbies, uh, career, and home, and what they're planning to do in those areas. And that's, of course, when you li link in the Pepsi. But the point I'm making is the more you do this now, the easier it will be to get the CAS. Because CAS is obviously the skills and the compliance, but it's also how you do the fact-finding <laughs> which comes into it. If you don't have a fact find. Just Google it. There's plenty of uh, financial advisors who put their fact find online for clients to download and fill in before they have their meetings. So just, just do a Google search for PDFs for fact finds and, and you'll get loads of examples. Get hold of those. You can start using those if you want to, to supplement your existing fact find. Remember, you're not allowed to give advice in these areas. You can talk about these things until you're blue. It's not a regulatory need to have a reg you know, exams for that. But when you start giving advice in these areas, then, of course, you need your sourcing, your suitability letters, etc. You need to be qualified for that purpose. So you can make a referral. But, of course, eventually you might become a financial advisor yourself. And if you do, you've done a good step forward. So, fact fine like it's 1999. <laughs> it's my top. <laughs>